Today, we're going to be checking out fullpage.js, which allows you to create very easily and quickly modern landing pages just like this. Before we begin, I wanted to mention this video sponsor, Skillshare.com, which is an online learning community for creators with over 25,000 classes in design, business, and more. So whether you want to fuel your curiosity, your creativity, or even your career, Skillshare is the perfect place to do just that. For instance, you're about to watch my design tutorial, but you could watch these full UI UX courses at Skillshare. Skillshare is also super affordable with an annual subscription of being less than 10 bucks a month. But if you're one of the first 500 people to click on the link here in the description in YouTube, then you get the first two months 100% free. So join up. Hey everyone, what's up? Gary Simon of CourseCetro.com. So someone uh, mentioned fullpage.js and doing a tutorial. So I just I uh, decided to check it out. I've heard of it before. It's been around for a while, but it's basically uh, a I would call it like a kind of like a framework for creating these modern scrolling based or slide based landing pages. Um, so here is the actual page uh, about it where you can learn more. Um, there's a lot of examples. Uh, there's a WordPress theme associated with it. And as you can see, as I mentioned, there's a lot of uh, examples that you can do really cool things, even with what uh, they have their extensions, stuff like this, very cool stuff. Um, but one thing which is gonna disappoint some of you, um, the extensions at least, of which there's a lot, uh, they are premium. You're gonna have to pay for those. Um, so going back here, uh, if you just want to use it, however, uh, and by the way, there is a pricing section. Uh, if you just want to use it, it is free for open source. All right, so that's the most important thing uh, to take away from this. Um, otherwise, if this is something where you know you're you're fully capable of maybe perhaps doing this stuff from scratch in HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, then you can admit this. But there are a ton of options anyhow. So we're I'm just going to show you how to create this demo that I showed you at the beginning. Uh, and again, there's a lot of options, and it's easy to get up and running. So let's go ahead and get started. But first make sure to subscribe. All right, so here I am in a completely blank folder called FP for full page JS. And um, we're here in Visual Studio Code, by the way, free code editor from Microsoft. And let's just go ahead and create our index.html and get all the basic setup going. So um, exclamation point for an M abbreviation will give us this quick boilerplate here for HTML link. We're gonna link a CSS folder with a file main.css inside of it. So let's create those two. So CSS, and we're gonna use SAS for this. You're gonna need the SAS live extension along with the live server reload extension. Um, you can come here, just type in live server, and you'll see live server here that you want to install. And also, I believe if I just type in live, yes, live SAS compilation as well. And then you'll gain access to be able to click watch SAS right there. All right, so if you don't know what SAS is, by the way, I have a free course um, on my YouTube channel. So just go to the search and search for that. All right, so let's get out of there. And first, let's go ahead and get full page JS actually integrated. And there's several ways. So if we check out, let me get rid of that. So if we check out uh, the GitHub page right here, I'm gonna link this in the YouTube description. Um, we can come down here. By the way, this is where all the documentation resides. Um, so let's come down here. So um, you can install with NPM uh, like this, um, or we can use a CDN, which is what we're gonna do. So if we click on this link right here, it takes us to this stuff right here. So. Um, the one that we want to include is our full page min.js file right here. So if we just come here to copy, we'll copy the script tag and we'll go back to our code editor. Oop, don't want that. All right, and then we'll just paste that here below the closing body tag. It's a control B to get rid of that sidebar. We also need some CSS as well, um, as mentioned by the documentation. Um, so for the CSS, we're just gonna take fullpage.min.cs right here, copy link tag. Now we'll put it right here, all right. All right, and that's pretty much all that's required to get up and running uh, with fullpage.js. So again, if you go back to the documentation, 
And I can't stress this enough because I'm not going to be covering every single thing because there's a lot of options here. It's going to um, tell you about the required HTML structure right here. All right, so let's go ahead and get the um, HTML going and we can start seeing what this thing looks like. So first of all, you're going to wrap everything in a single container. It can't be the body element. Uh, so we're going to do a div um, and we'll use Emmet for this full page. All right. And so inside of here, it's going to use um, various divs with a class of sections to define your different sections. All right. So um, and then you also have the concept of slides as well, which we'll get to. So let's create um, our first section. So just section. All right. And I'm also going to give them an additional class just so I can style them specifically. So let's call this S1 for section one here. Um, let's also uh, for this first example, we'll put in uh, a slide. Um, actually, let's do that after. Um, I just want to keep things really simple right now. So H1 will say um, the, the first section. All right. Let's just copy this paste it a couple times. We'll just do it like, uh, yeah, we'll just do it uh, three times. All right, uh, the third section, we'll, okay, here we go, let's update those. All right, let's save this. Um, by the way, nothing's gonna happen yet. So if we control B, right click, open with live server, you're gonna have to have that live server extension. Nothing, you know, this is gonna be standard HTML because we, we have to actually get our JavaScript up and running. So the way we do that, we'll just write this here in line and we have to create a new, here, let's get rid of that sidebar, full page. And we'll say um, the wrapper. This is where we have to define what the ID of the wrapper is, which in this case is full page. All right. And then we have all of our options here in this object. All right. So first, um, we're going to set to um, auto scrolling true. Um, let's just hit uh, save right now at this point. And as we can see, it's already working. So I'm using my mouse scroll wheel and I'm just tapping it slightly and that's what auto scrolling is by default. At this point, it's still really, really ugly. Um, before I go any further, I wanna style this up just so that we can see the different sections. So I've chosen three different photographs from unsplash.com. So I, I'm going to I'll, I'll link the um, links to those specific images in the YouTube uh, description. You can download them as well. And I'm going to get them in here. All right. So now I have an images folder with these images right here. All right. They're just photograph based. Okay. So um, let's go here to our SAS real quick. And the first thing I want to do is just change our H1s here to font family. Of course, Montserrat, which is already installed on my machine and probably yours if you've been watching me for a while. Um, text align center. Um, and what am I doing? Putting a comma after there. It's too early. Um, and then also we'll do our S1 for a section. We'll say background is URL and images one.jpg and background size will be cover and our h1 element is going to be color white all right so now if we go back here there it is now we also lack our um uh, our navigation over here but let's wait for a second let's uh get this finished up with this uh, other stuff um so oh yeah this is going to be redundant because all of them are going to be white in my case so let's just take that out oops don't even need that we already have an h1 there we go okay so what we'll do here is uh let's just copy this so we have our s2 this is going to change to two and the H1 specifically, I want to style it a little differently based on the photograph here. So we're going to do text align left instead of centering it margin left of uh, two EM and then font size is like four rem units. 
So now if we save this, there we go. All right, just for something different. <laughs> All right, um, we'll do S3. And S3 right here, this is gonna be three. And then um, this time, then I'm just gonna change this to 2EM. All right, uh, that's good. So let's check it out now. All right, so we lack a navigation. Uh, so let's go ahead and get that up. So the way we do that is through the properties. Uh, so very simple. Um, we'll say simply navigation true. And we can see it right there. Now, this particular navigation with these photographs, with this, this here, it's still kind of hard to see. Um, you want to be able to style this. We actually want to be able to see um, what, you know, these, we want higher contrast essentially. So the way we can do that uh, is first look in the documentation to see if there's any type of property that you can specify for, you know, anything that you want to change here about uh, full page JS. I couldn't find one for changing the color. It might actually be there. Maybe I just overlooked it. But uh, if you just uh, hit Control Shift I, get out the developer tools, do choose this little selector, hover over it. We could see it's just a span element. My my uh, I mark up here is real simple, so I don't have any other span elements. And so I'm just going to target the span element here and change the color. So let's come out here, span, and we'll say background is white important flag and there it is yay much much better and so these work as you would expect all right um, what if for instance you wanted to be able to um, link to one of these sections um, without the navigation well let me show you how to do that so we could Let's just take our first section and just temporarily I'm going to put a link in here. Uh, we'll say section one, clicky, there we go. Now this isn't going to work yet, but we have to define uh, in JavaScript the anchor names for these. So we can put anchors in an array. And so this one will define the first section, so section one and then section two, section three, we'll name it. So you can name these whatever you want. Um, let's change that to section three. So we'll go the first to three. So now we click it and it takes us all the way down to three. Very simple stuff. Let's remove that though, because that looks like garbage. All right, um, what about having navigation tool tips? Again, this is all in the documentation. So we can do navigation, um, tool tips and we can put in home maybe uh, about us and then contact so now if we hover over this there we go so simple so simple um, we can also make them active so we can show just the active uh, tool tips show active tool tip true by default this is uh, false so now it's going to show it consistently uh, based on which one, which uh, slide or, or section is active. Um, let's go ahead and uh, also adjust the scrolling speed. So by default, I believe it's set at one second if it's doing the auto scrolling, if you have that set to true, uh, but you can overwrite that too. So uh, you set scrolling speed, we can try three, three seconds. This is going to be really slow though. I would not advise this. But as you can see, you have full control over the speed at which it goes to these different sections. So let's leave that a thousand. Um, let's add um, slides. Now the slides simply mean it's going to be, um, you, you can do a, a secondary navigation where it's horizontal scrolling. Um, so you can have like a slide within a section, if that makes sense. Um, so let's go ahead and do that real quick. So the way you do that is we'll go up in our first section 
and we write um, div class with slides. So slide, and inside of here, we'll say, um, I'll just do another h1. Uh, uh, the first slide, yeah, I think we'll do that. Um, yeah, oh, actually, we'll just get rid of this one. There we go. All right, and then we'll copy this. All right, and then we'll say the second and the third. So now, by default, it gives you these big arrows, which this doesn't work. I mean, it works, but it doesn't work because it's overlaying our navigation because we have one over here. Um, so you could do a number of things uh, in order to fix this, by the way. Um, you could restyle these or reposition this, uh, the little dot base navigation, or you could just get rid of these left and right uh, arrows entirely. And we could do that through a setting over here and that would be control arrow set to false. All right, so now how do you actually get them? You can't drag them, although if you had one of the premium, extent, premium extensions, they do um, have one for sliding and dragging, um, but uh, you can have a secondary slide navigation. So what we can do is put slides navigation set that to true and leave it just like there. And by default, it's gonna show up on the bottom left here. You can also choose a slide nav, slides nav position uh, property and with a value of top. So you can make it go to the top here. Um, I think it's too like close to the left over here. So I'm just gonna reposition this. But again, when we click this, you can see this works here. And of course, you can have a lot more than just an H1 element. You can have full layout or layout, like vastly, the whole thing can change. I'm just keeping things simple right now. Um, so let's change the position of this. And again, there's not an, uh, a property that allows you to specify like the margin or whatever. Uh, so you just have to do this through CSS. Um, so you have to, once again, uh, use your selector and figure out um, where which style that we need to change. Uh, the one that I want to change is this one right here. And you can always experiment, by the way, like right in here, you can just say margin left, 1EM. And if it's not allowing you to overwrite it, you could just put in an important flag and now it will work. So now it's moved that over and it just, Oh wait, by the way, I'm probably right on top of that thing, aren't I? Can you guys see that? Yeah, oh, just barely, okay. Yeah, it, it looks uh, better just moved over. So I'm just gonna copy this and we'll go back to our CSS and we'll just get rid of that because that's already there and save it. All right, awesome stuff. Okay, so now once again, we'll just come back and take a look at it one more time. So here we are at the beginning. Um, it looks a little weird having to the navigation style the same, similar. So I, I personally wouldn't do this. Um, but again, I just wanted to show you the functionality. I think I'm probably gonna do uh, more of a full course where we use something like this. Uh, I'm not sure if it may be full page JS simply because um, it is sort of a premium plugin. Uh, but I, I definitely wanna do a sort of like a modern landing page, maybe for perhaps from scratch. Um, where it allows you to do these different things here uh, in a modern way. All right, so hopefully you found that useful. If you did, make sure to subscribe. If you haven't yet, click the bell notification icon as well to get actual notifications of when I upload. And I will see you guys real soon. Goodbye.